Oh, hello everybody, it's your Meadow here. We're right back with part two of the enemy AI tutorial. Platform AI, and we gotta change a whole bunch of stuff. I made it all simple for you guys at first, but we're gonna add a whole lot more. Alright, now, let's start off with me. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Start off immediately by adding one of these. On loop name plus ID. We're going to insert one of these in here. Move it to the top. Insert it here. Move it to the top. Insert it there. Move it to the top. Insert it there. Move it to the top. And we also got to make another event. I'm sorry for just starting out so quickly, but I want to be very efficient. I don't want this to be like seven parts or something. Maybe three at max, but. Um, and we're going to add, oh, actually, I'm going to compare, oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot an ID value. That is vital. So, we're going to put an ID value there, add it in. Uh, okay, and go in here, event 4, and add when this value ID is equal to fast loops get loop index. And of course, we're going to have to enter the whole thing. This is the most tedious part of the whole process. You have to enter name plus ID. So an ID of this thing is equal to the loop index of that loop. And this graph is different, then it runs this. This is very important because it individualizes each one of the loops. Alright, and we're going to have to copy this. On loop this. Crap. On loop this. On loop name of that enemy plus V. Copy one of these down in there. And. Let's see. Actually. And do something different here. Replace that. Let's compare two general values. Go in here, get fast loop loop index. Get this thing's name. Oops, it's in strings. Get name plus the. You're going to be doing this a lot just to let you know. And yes, it is terribly annoying, but it must be done. On loop v when the loop index of that equals zero. Now we're going to have to edit this out again, or exit out of there. Go into the actual object that you have. It can be any shape whatsoever. For now we'll keep it as a block. Copy that, go down here, add a new one, and name it Hitbox. And copy or paste that in there. And for simplicity's sake, just get rid of all that. Make sure it has the same hotspot and everything. You know what? Actually, for the sake of all that is good and holy, let's ink the hotspot right in the center. Since that will become important. So, Alright, so there we go. Oops. So go right back into the movement behavior. And, and that is that in this event, number 8. Add change animation. Now, it doesn't have hitbox listed, so we'll just have to put 12 there. So change the animation sequence to 12, which should be hitbox. Animation 12 is always after stand up, or whichever the last one is, so you can just count down from there. If you have more animations than your enemy, then you can do that. Now this, I should explain what the purpose of that is. That completely eliminates any need for detectors. And I know that probably sounds crazy, but that's actually true. If you have a hitbox animation, it makes it more difficult to change the animation of the enemy, but it makes it so you don't have to have a separate object as a detector, which can be a godsend in some situations, but it also makes it more difficult to play an animation. So if you have an enemy that is going to have to be swinging its arms and animating like crazy, you might want to actually use a detector. But this technique is to show you how you can do it without one. And I thought it was pretty darn crazy, but it's also really darn cool. And place of that, 
Alright, in view of that, we have to add another event actually up here. Insert new event, always. And change animation sequence to stopped. And I know this seems really weird because we just changed it to hitbox down there, but I'll explain that a little later. So, when the loop index is 0, it changes animation to 12. When it's not overlapping a backdrop, actually we're going to have to move these things into all these events. So it has to be equal to the loop index of its ID because it's running loops within loops for each enemy. We only have one enemy right now so it doesn't really appear to have any significance. But just like with our missiles, we have to have this in every single event. Actually, for the sake of simplicity, right now we don't need them absolutely. Leave it out while we edit some stuff in here. So when it does overlap a backdrop, here's where that bounce value comes in. So just to grab add to grab add minus grab add times and then we're going to use bounce. Put that in parentheses times 0.01. going to be seeing that 0.01 a lot in here. Put the whole thing in parentheses. Parentheses, grab, add, parentheses, collider, and parentheses, uh, times, parentheses, bounce, parentheses, and parentheses, and parentheses, and parentheses. Um, here you can just take a good look at that and copy it down. So, we're going to do that. And right now, do you know what the bounce times 1 one hundredth is? Bounce is 100. So it's going to be 1. So when it lands, well, its animation goes all funky because we haven't finished it yet, but it doesn't bounce at all. Now check this out. Change that to 150. Now watch. Yeah, that's right. It bounces right there. So, that's why I do use these values, because it makes it really easy to customize things just like that. And, of course, we want to do kind of the same thing when it hits a wall. So, actually, I might just try copying this. Put it in here when it hits a wall. Oops. I'll use set its ors to ors add to oops ors add minus ors add that's bounce it should work oops well it sure doesn't that's because I put bounce back to 100 what was I thinking so it goes down boing 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 when it hits this it's going to bounce off just a little bit just like that now, you might not want it to bounce off the walls like that, that was just kind of a test. Or you might want it to kind of slow down when it hits the ground. So, in that case, when it hits the ground, when it's on this grab thing, I'm going to set its ores to its ores add times 0.25. It's just going to slow down every time it hits the ground, like that. And there you go. Now, we did this thing with the V equals zero, and you notice this animation was kind of flickering. This probably has something to do with that we, with the fact that we haven't done this for the ORS thing. So let's do that. Change that to an H. Kind of, sorry, I'm kind of stopping explaining things, but um, it should be easy enough to follow along. I and mean, you can replay this video as many times as you want. Setting its animation kind of funny. Let me just try something here. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, what I just did there, actually, I can't undo it for some reason. Move the stop thing from that always above event 4 down to the always that has the same event as the ID running thing. And you can just get rid of event 3. Okay, so coming along 
However, if we... Sorry, I'm going to have to take the headphones away just for a second here. Okay, we have three, or more than one of those objects. Yeah, you can see things aren't quite going well there. That's because we need to individualize it by putting this on every single event. And now it looks a little cluttered, but now it should not work. Hmm. Well, let's see. Some of these might not need it. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do at all. Well, that's disappointing. So, on that, maybe it needs to be moved up a little bit. Perhaps. Nope. So, let's look through, see if we can find the problem really quick. If not, I'm going to edit out this part and then come back when I have figured it out. Okay, everybody, I'm back. I figured it out. Sorry for that little hiccup. It's a couple changes we have to do. Just two changes. Wow, that's all it was. It's pretty obvious, actually. I forgot to make start a frame, spread value zero, in ID of those things. Actually, we could change that to always. Always spread value zero in those things ID. That's all it needed to make them actually work correctly. Also, for the animation change, you actually should not put the first change animation to stop in the same event as this thing. Start the ID loop. Make another always and put it below this one. Alright. And that's it. Because after you did that, or after we do that, that's what happens. They all work correctly. Now that's fine and dandy and all, but they still don't chase you. So, um, we're going to have to do that. Also... Add another event. Actually, I might change that until I <laughs> save that until next episode. Um, also, I, let me just demonstrate a couple things that you can do with the all this stuff. On um, grab pull, if you change that, they'll fall faster or slower. I made them fall much faster. Um, yeah, the bounce. It's pretty self-explanatory. Very nice, useful thing. A little warning, though, don't put it over 200, because that'll make them bounce higher than they were falling, and they will never stop, and they will just continually bounce higher and higher. And that's no good, unless you want that to happen. 200 will make them bounce at the exact same height that they started, or something to that effect. Oh, you know, their max fall speed is 6, so even if you start them way up here, it won't fall that fast and bounce that high. But, uh, yeah, 100 is no bounce, 200 is max bounce, anything below 100 will also kind of mess it up. Actually, they'll just make them stop instantly. So, that's pretty cool. And for now, I think I'll stop it there. Again, if you have any questions, I might actually post all these videos at once, so you can kind of just question, ask questions on which video that suits you best. I want to split it into parts because it makes it easier to digest, I think. Like, you can ask more specific questions. If you have 40 minutes of video to watch and then you ask a question about a certain part of it, then everybody has to find that part, and, you know, it just gets kind of annoying. So, I'm going to split it off here. And next time, we'll come back and actually program the chasing function in these guys. They'll hop after you. And I'll see you then. Sorry for that hiccup, guys, with the not figuring out the thing. But hopefully you'll forgive me for that. See you next time.